Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kath Wilner, and along with my husband, Peter, we've had the privilege of hosting Seaside Kasu since Saturday and will for another few days till he heads back home. CSI is the Food Security Program Coordinator for MCC Ethiopia. Peter and I were the reps there from 2012 to 16, and although we didn't work with CSI as a colleague, we did work with them as part of a partner agency, Conservation Agriculture, when CSI was working with Food for the Hungry. CSI joined MCC in April of 2017, so he's been working there a little over two years. And he has come to share with us a little bit about the work, particularly in food security, but the general work of Mennonite Central Committee Ethiopia. We'll be happy to take some questions at the end of our time. Thank you. Good afternoon. Nice to meet you. Uh, as it has been introduced, my name is Sisai Kasu. I'm working on food security with the uh, partners, so I'm glad to be here and present and share uh, what we are working there. And so though my presentation is the whole about what MCC Ethiopia is working, but I will focus mainly on food security. And I will give you explanation for food security programs, but there are, there, on the presentation there is uh, picture for other partners too. So MCC Ethiopia uh, is working a lot of things and uh, before that when, whenever you uh, we, we think of Ethiopia people think that okay what's going on in Ethiopia currently and everybody wants to hear that. So we have promises like the new prime minister is uh, doing a great job in stabilizing the peace and bringing Ethiopia to the next level of development. So we are hopeful that things will be changed very soon. Yeah. And we have also a president, uh, a woman president for the first time. So. Oh, okay. 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 okay, so we have those promises and with the new prime minister, the other uh, good thing done in Ethiopia is there are focus on gender balance regarding the, the leadership issues and there is also a focus on participating on different activities. So for those of you who don't know Ethiopia, where it is, it's located right there. It's in Africa and East Africa and in the Horn of Africa. And where we are working in Ethiopia, we have certain partners working with different uh, development activities. We have 18 projects. So before joining MCC, I've been working in the west part of the country called Benshangul Gumuz. And we were working on uh, conservation agriculture. We are also working in the west part of the country with refugees and education, water, agriculture, and, and also we are working on Somaliland. So before jumping to what specifically we are doing, it's better to introduce who are our staffs. Salomon Tafari is a program manager for uh, the office, especially for health, wash, and education. If you come to Ethiopia, Wondersen can take you through Addis or everywhere in Ethiopia. So he is a logistic uh, coordinator for our office. This guy is, you know him. and. I've been visiting one of the partners in Afar. Afar is the most desert place where uh, goats were the common uh, livelihood. So Jerusalem is our finance person, and she is working on accounting stuff. And Rose and Jerusalem has been 
touring and uh, going to visit a farmer house and staying there and doing the, the activities and this picture taken during that time. These are our country representatives, our current country representatives, Bruce Buckwalter, Rose Schenk, and their son, older son, Christian, Andrew, Christian, Daniel, and Jacob. So Christian is going to marry next week. So that's the good news. And here are our previous staff and Makonen Desaling was retired after serving MCC for 41 years and Yeshi uh, was working as accountant before Jerusalem. Here are our former country reps. Yeah. So, so the, the major sectors that we are working in is health, water, and sanitation, that is a WASH program. So the focus of this project is mainly on water scheme building, like we, we are doing on shallow wells, handbag wells, and we are also dealing with um, sanitation and hygiene, personal hygiene and sanitation. So we have uh, partners who are working on this sector. We have also emergency disaster relief, especially in the place where I was showing the picture. In Afar, there are a lot of emergency cases, so we are trying to tackle those issues. The food security and sustainability livelihood, especially in northern part and west part of the country, we are working on food security. When, when I say food security, more of uh, watershed rehabilitation and conservation agriculture. Education within Addis and around Addis, uh, we have education programs. We have also peace program, which we are working with churches. So the health and the HIV uh, AIDS uh, prevention partner is Beza HIV Prevention and Treatment. This is one of the projects. And we are working in Addis. Thank you. We are working in Addis in uh, doing awareness creation, more of awareness creation. And uh, this program is impacting a lot of people and within Addis. And they have another project in, out of Addis, but it's not with MCC. But with MCC, we have a project in Addis Ababa. We have also MKCRD, uh, Prevention, uh, Care, and Support. This is uh, south from Addis, and it's about 160 kilometers. Uh, the prevalence of HIV in, in that specific area called Zoai is very high, so we are working on uh, creating awareness with those uh, uh, beneficiaries. So here is a peace program. Uh, we are working with Masarat Christos Church. And Masarat Christos is basically a Mennonite church. So uh, we are working a peace program with them. And we are also working on uh, prison uh, projects. Uh, we are also working in uh, disaster response, emergency disaster res response in Somaliland, and even though Somaliland is not in Ethiopia, uh, our country reps are supporting them to manage the program, and we have a partner called World Concern. Here we have ANA for education support, that is on northern part of Ethiopia. Uh, more of the activities are IG uh, income generation activities are then here, and this program uh, supports us. Uh, some of the beneficiaries are people with HIV AIDS, and some of them are orphans. So we are also start working there. So the Beza Community Development Association, there is school, there is also school uh, uh, tutoring program, and 
we have also partner in Addis Ababa and as well as in the place called Nazareth, which is 100 kilometers from Addis of East. We have Remember the Poor Community. Uh, that is also another uh, partner we are working with. So this is the Anna Hofer project uh, manager, executive uh, director. So the idea of Anna Hofer comes after uh, the lady called Anna Hofer. And she, she is not alive now. She uh, donated uh, this money for Anna Hofer. And uh, her name is Sister Brahan. She was working with Anna Hofer in the US. And she came to uh, Ethiopia and to work on uh, this program. Uh, the other is uh, activities with International Medical Corps, and that is a kind of meet for Sudanese refugees. There is a conflict in South Sudan, and there are a lot of uh, refugees in South Sudan, so one part is to deliver um, uh, canned meat for that specific uh, area. The other is AFAR uh, Pastoral Development Association, that's APTA. We are working on emergency water and emergency veterinary support. This area is very hot, and sometimes I was, uh, I, when I was there, it's about 47 degrees centigrade, degrees Celsius. So it's very horrible area, and uh, I wish if you can visit during the winter time, <laughs> especially. <laughs> so here, the main problem is water. And the people are pastoralists moving from place to place. And it's very hard to get uh, water here. So MCC is working on uh, building uh, water schemes. Like uh, there is cistern which to accumulate water. And um, we have also steam wells. That is uh, a new technology, actually. We are still working on that. And on the cistern, or the locally called uh, Birkat, we are tracking water. So one of the emergency program is focusing on tracking water during the dry season. Even though it's a rainy season, there is no uh, uh, sufficient water in this area. Uh, the other problem here is there, is there are goats and there is uh, animal disease. So we are supporting them to deliver uh, veterinary med medicines and uh, vaccinations. Uh, this is a lady and, uh, called Valerie, and you can Google, and her name is all in, in the YouTube, you can find her. She is originally from Australia, but now she is living in Afar, that hot area. So. Uh, she married with a local uh, indigenous person, and uh, her husband is from Afar. So we were visiting with Bruce, and it, it was very hot. And even when you have a very cold water, after a few minutes, after seven or ten minutes, it will be hot. So I'm trying to survive there, you know. <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> So this is a cistern, I mean, this is a steam well. Around here there is a steam, and this uh, construction uh, is expected to capture some of the steam and change it to water. So we are still dealing with that, and it's a new technology, and there is no running cost once we install it there. Uh, here is also another a wash program that is water, uh, health, water, and sanitation program. We are working with uh, organization called Afro Ethiopian Integrated Development. This partner is working on building, uh, constructing shallow well and handa well in the place where uh, there is insufficient water. So uh, this, the uniqueness of this partner is they are going to a very remote area. So compare relatively remote area. So they will go there and dig a, a shallow well and provide for 
the community. So if you have a chance to visit this community, they are very humble and generous, and they are always thankful for MCC. They know MCC as well as uh, the AID, the Afro-European Integrated Development. Here is uh, another food security program. Uh, I can say more here because I was here working with this community, and during that time, uh, Peter and Kat was uh, country reps. Uh, they were country reps. So uh, the issue with Asosa especially uh, is generally in Ethiopia, the land is degraded. It's old aged uh, land and soil. So traditionally what uh, our farmers are doing is the, the tillage frequency is very high, like six times four times, minimum four times, and sometimes it is 12, 12 times. So a farmer who is not tilling frequently is considered as a lazy farmer. So the problem is this repeated tillage is causing soil degradation, and the population is increasing alarmingly. Like before, in 2007, before 12 years, our population was 80 million. But now, after 12, years, our population is estimated about 104 million, which is 2 million per year. The population is increasing, and the soil fertility is declining. And that is a problem for us. And we don't have uh, ample land, like, just like Canada. So what uh, Peter and other colleagues, Peter Cut and other colleagues come up with is applying conservation agriculture in, in this area and other parts of the country. And there was a resistance from agriculture uh, ministry because the thought that we, we, we have been taught in college and universities, repeated tillage is a solution to increase yield. So there was a resistance during that time, but now things are getting better. And we are working with, in general, with about 25 thousand farmers, but now the, the plan was 25,000 uh, farmers, but now it's raised to 30,000 uh, farmers. So the CS Scaling Up program has been launched like four years ago, and we have two partners, and the other third partner is not with MCC, so we are working in team. So the other one is... Uh, MSCFSO, that's Maguara Sennai Child uh, and Family Support Organization. Uh, here, compared to the Asosa, the west part, the, east, the north part has small land holding size. In Asosa, we, are, we have about, farmers have about five hectares. The indigenous farmers have five hectares, but here, less than one acre but the population increases here are very high. So what we have to do is just applying different activities like conservation agriculture and watershed rehabilitation. Uh, this is how water, uh, how soil and land is degraded and we have to deal with this because the soil will be uh, eroded and go to the river and farmers are losing a lot of uh, soil. So here is the kind of activity we are working on uh, watershed rehabilitation. So that kind of, it's common to see that kind of degraded land, but here there is a gabion check dam, and we are working this one with uh, Canada Food Grains Bank. So the issue here is there is a cash for work scheme like people will, will involve it here to uh, work on soil and water uh, structures, but they will get very few amount of money for, that's a lunch money actually. So the benefit, the ultimate goal is to rehabilitate the degraded land. At the end of the project, we will deliver to uh, the community. Uh, so this is one of the partner in, in, in North called uh, that is uh, Ethiopia and uh, 
development organization that is uh, one of the, part, the, the partners. This is Gavion Checkdown. We are also working on different physical structures like soil band uh, and others also, hedge row planting and others. So this is what have been done. And this is a degraded land before plantation and doing the rehabilitation uh, work, it looks like this. And farmers, I, I was trying to talk with the farmers who are living here, and they were saying that our land was ugly, like useless, but now we are looking, uh, we are harvesting a very good harvest. And this is the difference, and the ultimate goal is to rehabilitate the land. Though we don't have uh, ample land, we have to take care of what we have already. So here, the program is integrating both watershed rehabilitation as well as uh, conservation agriculture here. Here is before and after, and this is early stage actually. The picture might not be clear. Uh, here is the when I talk about conservation agriculture, most of you who are uh, from agriculture background, you may know it, but for those of you uh, who want to know about conservation agriculture, it has three principles. The first one is minimum tillage. As I told you, our uh, soil, our land has been tilled frequently, so we are losing more soil and we are losing also the soil fertility. So. To deal with, to, to tackle that problem, we have to uh, introduce minimum tillage. So that's one of the first principle of conservation agriculture. This is uh, mulch. That is the second principle of conservation agriculture. In West Park, where I was working before joining MCC, this was a source of wildfire. And people will burn. Uh, uh, the attitude that we have is, Whenever the crop residue is in the field, it's causing weed. That is the attitude we had. So farmers will do immediately after harvest, they will put a fire and burn it. So that was an issue. But now, farmers are competing for the mulch. And uh, that is the other principle. So with the mulch, as I told you, the attitude was having crop residue is causing uh, weed, but here having a mulch is reducing the labor for the farmers. Currently farmers are, uh, I mean, they are good, they are happy with conservation agriculture. They are working uh, with less labor because the frequency of the tillage has been reduced and the weed frequency is also reduced and the yield is increasing. So, as I've been saying in other events, Canada has been sending a grain for Africa, but now sending money to, to change the attitude of the farmers. So MCC is working on the attitudinal change of the farmer. Rather than waiting for somebody to bring grain, it's possible for the farmers themselves to produce by themselves with, with a given resource. So the other uh, principle uh, we have is crop association and intercropping. This is a third principle. So farmers are, we're applying this. This is not any technology for them. But as I told you, the land size is very small. So farmers want to gain more grain, a diversified grain from a given land. So uh, that is one of the benefits. The other one is a risk they will avoid risk with as associating crops just like this. If there is a disease comes for maize, the haricot bean, the soya bean can survive, and or the, inter the intercropped uh, crop can be can survive. So they will distribute their risk to uh, avoid uh, disaster. The other one is nitrogen fixing, and whenever you have uh, cereal with uh, legumes, the legumes will help uh, to fix nitrogen. So it will reduce the uh, amount of fertilizer that we have to apply and it will also 
increase the soil fertility. So this is all about my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. So, questions? Yeah, regarding the, uh, the yield increment, uh, most farmers are getting self-sufficient. And farmers who are producing excess are bringing to the market. The modality that we are working is whenever uh, farmers want to sell, by the way, our farmers are not making, I mean, they, they can't fix their price. The others will. Uh, decide the price. So we are organizing them with self-help group as well as with aggregation group. Then they will aggregate the harvest and there is a linkage that uh, the program link them with a farm uh, with the buyers and the buyers will come and buy the aggregated crop. So farmers are benefiting through that but most of the farmers are becoming self-sufficient with this program. Where did you get your agricultural training? You sound like you were very well informed. Okay. Okay. The, um, the question was, where did you get your training, Seaside? Mm -hmm. you, yourself, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm uh, graduated. I'm graduated with agriculture, and which I was university? from Asa University, which is uh, south of uh, Ethiopia. I'm also working in uh, state farms and also working in NGOs for different uh, uh, years, uh, for many years. But my main knowledge comes from the farmers. Since I was working friendly with the farmers, they are the practical source of the knowledge. So I'm not that much knowledgeable, but yeah, I'm, I was sharing what I learned from them. Another question? Darlene, sorry. Uh, what would be one of your favorite results that you've seen from, the, from your work that got, has gotten you excited that you've seen over the years? Yeah, with uh, this program, uh, we visit projects frequently. And the exciting thing is, Farmers who were old age were kind of retired. But with this program, since it requires less labor due to the, the reduced tillage and due to the reduced weed frequency, they are getting back to the farming. So that's one of the issue and one of the success. The other is widow women who, who don't have oxen to plow. They were out of the farming and they were renting out their farm for some other person. But now this is, this doesn't require a labor since the, the size of the land is very small. So they are getting back and they are producing by, them, by themselves rather than waiting for the others. In Ethiopia there is, traditionally there is a principle. When I'm, uh, I can't plow my land, I will rent out with in kind rent out, not with money. Then somebody will come to my farm and give me one third of the harvest. Two thirds will go to the, the owner, I mean the, the one who, is, who came from somewhere. So our women farmers were not benefited, but now they are starting to get benefit. Someone else? I'm, I'm curious the before and after picture um, of rehabilitating the land. How long does it take to rehabilitate land to sort of get it back to its 
So the question was, how long does it take yeah. to rehabilitate? Uh, yeah, that picture it took about three years, and because there should be continuous uh, plantation, uh, as you know, here there is soil bend, and so it takes about minimum of three years. Um, well, in this case, I think they planted, uh, on the contour, they were planting trees, a leguminous tree, uh, which slows down the, the flow of water. So over time, it actually creates almost a terrace where, where the land accumulates behind where the trees are. Um, and that would take more than three years. You'd begin to see that. You say, <clears throat> describe some of your uh, significant uncertainties or risks that you face in your work on a regular basis. Okay, okay the question around um, risk and uncertainty for, well, I guess the work that MCC does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so some of the risks for, for us is it was uh, security, like the, for the last three years there was no stable security within the country, but now there is improvement, so yeah, traveling to the field, visiting, working with a partner, even for the partner themselves, it was a uh, high risk. The other risk that our farmers are facing is a climate change. That is a very hard issue, they can't tackle it, and with this uh, chance, I want to tell you something. Yesterday, our new prime minister was uh, launching a one-day planting. Just within one day, the plan was to plant about 250 million seedlings, three seedlings. But uh, the achievement was about 350 million uh, seedlings. So government is trying to stabilize those issues, but it's not possible to work only by, by one country. So the cumulative effect is affecting the, the farmers, our farmers. Another question, any more? If not, um, I know they have some activities, sorry? Oh, yes, well. <laughs> I think you're aware, um, we are hoping to have a learning tour to Ethiopia um, next, uh, next winter. It's the last week of uh, January, uh, first week of February, and we'll be visiting many of these projects that CSI has talked about, and CSI will be coming along with us to uh, guide the tour and help, uh, help the participants to interact with, uh, with farmers and other people. So. Uh, we, we still have a couple spaces left, I think, so. Okay, thank you, uh, Sisa. Oh, okay. you want to say? <laughs> okay, uh, I want to thank you for uh, listening, for taking, for investing your time. I, I want to take this opportunity also to appreciate Peter and Kat for hosting, and for you guys also, thank you. Thank you, Sisa.